Bobby. What'd you say, Jay? I'm mad. Oh, okay, cool. So last we were left off, you guys killed all the bandits from bloody murder, and basically the bartender is in utter shock, and his bar, his understudy Ponzi just like throws up, and you see the bartender like hand him a bucket to start cleaning up the mess, um, just from all the bloodshed of all the brigands that you killed. Nobody's too like upset with you guys because they are brigands and they pretty much had like a bad reputation in the town. Mm -hmm. But as you guys are sitting around the tavern. A middle-aged woman rushes in, and the bartender says, Sarah, what, what's wrong? And she says, My son, Davy's missing. I, I need help. I, ha I haven't been able to find him all day. And she looks, and she basically spots you guys as the blood-stained, <laughs> hardy warriors <laughs> that you look like. And basically asks you guys, Are you guys able to help me? My son... I always told him to stay out of Zorn's woods, but I haven't seen him all day. Bob. Well, um, I y'all gonna have to talk. Immediately, I, I, like, offer up and... and just offer help. Like, yeah. Okay. Um, well, Anything I can do to help, any information you have, I can... just tell me. Okay. I'm not sure where he went, to be honest. I haven't, I had took a day nap and he was playing outside and I haven't seen him since. Um, but I can take you guys to where I live. It's right on the outskirts of town, um, near the woods. Um, but I'll show you guys where I live. Just follow me, okay? Mm-hmm. Is it gonna be a reward? You can definitely ask her. Um, I'm not that bad at that. Yeah, um, I can offer a little bit of gold if you um, are able to find him. For, uh, I can't offer much because I live by myself. I don't have... Uh, my husband passed away not too long ago. I'm feeling bad, man. <laughs> yeah, shit. Alright. So... I'll drag you guys over to where her house is. Meow. Yeah. So basically, this is her house. It's basically a small little shack on the outside of town. Not too far from the villages, but definitely closer to the woods than any other ones. Um, mm -hmm. Where do you guys start your investigation to find out where little Davy went? Little Davy, I think I just start looking around in the yard to see if I can see any footprints or traces of where he went. All right, so you do see some, um, like, can I, huh? do I need to roll a, roll a something here, like a perception? Not check? yet, but you can. In uh, so basically, you'll see paw prints. You are you do see the paw prints, they're pretty noticeable. You don't need to roll a perce okay. perception check about that, but if you'd like to roll a perception check, go ahead if you want to see if yeah, there's anything else about them. Yeah, I'd like to see if I could like identify the the paw prints. So they definitely look like wolf paw prints, and they're heading into Zorn's woods. But that's basically all you could tell from um, your wisdom of animals. Are there any other humans nearby that we can communicate with? So, I don't know if there's... there. I haven't seen many humans in Zorn's Woods. Um, yeah, I think seeing the, like, wolf paw prints, I just, like, notify her. I'm like, oh, it's not good. <laughs> um, I, I hope they didn't get Davy because I don't... Um, I didn't notice the wolves, but they might have came and got him. I hope not. Um, I told him to stay away from the woods, though. Um... But well, the villagers... I, I hate to inform you, ma'am, but there are some wolf prints right here in your yard. Yeah. Um... Are you sure they're not, like, a large dogs or anything like that? I'm certain. I'm certain. Oh, I hope nothing happened to Davy. Would you be able to go possibly look for him? Um, I don't believe there would be any villagers near here that would have any information because I'm a little bit more close to the woods than anybody else lives. Um... But there are other creatures in the woods that are pretty dangerous, 
as well. That's that's all right. You go inside and keep safe, and we'll be back with okay. Davy. Thank you. And then let's see. Davy. <laughs> okay, I need to go into my goddamn. What are these things called? Skills. Skills. I need to see what insight means or does. Yeah, it's hard to tell the difference between insight and perception. Let's see, let me zoom out a little bit. Dick Ripper thinks woman not telling whole truth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that would be what like an insight would be. If like you're talking to someone and you wanted to see if they were like telling the truth or not, you could roll an insight check. Oh, can I roll that right now? Then? Yeah, go ahead. I just went wrong with it because you know, like okay, sometimes it's a fine. she it's seems you know, like she's telling the truth. Like <laughs> From as much as you can tell. You know, uh, sometimes like the retarded. really retarded character will fucking say something and then you never know if it's true or not. Like my character's retarded enough yeah. to say that. So Andrew, uh, okay. as far as you Thorn's know... Thorn's forest is huge! Yeah. So as far as you know, she's telling the truth as well. Um, you, you just sense that she's a little bit like aloof. Like she didn't keep up with her kid. When she should have, she's a little bit timid about it. Um, because she felt like That's she should have kept it. The hell of it. Yeah. You basically pick up that she's telling the truth as well, Cody. Yeah, um, I, I know. So as you I don't guys... Know if this... oh, you go. <laughs> oh, you're fine. What were you going to say? I was going to say, it's a little cheesy. Mm -hmm. um, if you let us all roll on a skill check. Yeah. Yeah, for that situation... It... Uh, for that situation, though, since you're all talking to her, it's something you can all yeah, pick up. It, it if does, it was it like, does make sense. Yeah, if it was something like, uh, you're actually searching for the footprints, so you would be the only one that would roll perception. Um, but yeah, as you guys approach into the woods, um, the paw prints are pretty easy to follow. You do hear um, goblins screaming, though. Um, yeah. In the distance, Jamie, you could pick it up as goblin. Um, yep. You hear one say, Or Gakalak! Which basically means. Did it break? No. Uh, so Jamie can actually, uh, his character is actually able to speak Goblin. Yeah. Um. I think I just announced to to the group that uh, they're fighting the wolves. Let, let's go. Let's go. They're fighting the wolves. All right. And then... So basically, you come on to this um, wooded area where you see a bunch of goblins surrounded by wolves that are basically trying to um, defend okay. a lair behind them. Um, they don't know she the yet because they're trying the... to defend the den. Yes. And okay. Basically. Um, they, the goblins have not noticed you at all. The wolves are too preoccupied with the goblins. Um, what do you guys do? Could I speak to the goblins and just say, do not attack us. We are here to help you. Let's fuck these wolves up. You definitely can. Um, so the goblin closest to you screams, well, hurry up and help us then, pale skin. Uh, we, we gotta kill these wolves. They just keep thinning out our numbers over and over again. And it's really hampering our progress. <laughs> All right. So you guys are going to help the goblins? I would like to help the goblins. And right. uh, roll initiative on attacking the wolves. All right. Everybody roll initiative. And let me do something real quick. Oh, I didn't select my thing, but I rolled a 19. Can you punch in a 19 for me? On that token tracker thingy? Oh, I think it... Oh, yeah, give me one second. Because I didn't select, I didn't select it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I how do I... Yeah, it's going to take me a minute to get used to that. Let me see. How can I do it? Let me see if I... Maybe I need to select it, roll another initiative, and then you can actually just change it. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I can do that. So, James, Cody's got 19, 19. Because I had hit a 19. Yeah. Oh my god, we all rolled a 19 initiative. We're insane. I don't know. My first one was an 8, though. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you can change it. Okay, sick. 
Uh, so your first one was an eight. Smacked. <laughs> Smacked. All right. And then. All right. Did we get them all? Okay. So the turn will start with Hydroclusis and then Jamie. Here. That's a wolf, right? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if it's ever a tie like that, it should start with whoever hit the highest like base roll. Ah, uh, hello. <laughs> All right. And that, that is one a wolf hit. doesn't have a health bar on the right. Yeah, the one I'm after. Oh, it does. I just don't think I have it shown. Give me one second. Oh, it should. Oh no, there it goes. There you go. So that will go to. All right, and then it will be Jamie's turn. All right. Um, I think I just follow up with Hydroclusis and run in behind him. And can I hit the wolf from here? Or do I need to move in like that? Uh, I would say move in. Okay. Yeah, move in, and then I take a. Take a bash at it. All right. And that's a mess. All right. And now it is. Um, wait, wait, wait. Wait, oh yeah, wait, you wait, still wait, got a turn. I need to see if I know know how to do the the punchy thing. Because mm -hmm. I think I can. First level, price of murder. attack yep okay so I can do that bonus action of punching from level one okay so I rolled this one that is a hit so that wolf is dead y'all killed him boop best in peace wolf alright now it is Marl's turn yeah I think I just punched the wolf right in the fucking mouth <laughs> jaw dislocates just top, top down fucking <laughs> slam dunk jaw into jaw he's not feeling good hey. brain boom alright now it is the wolf's turn and I just like shout I just like scream as I do it just like a most pussy ass battle cry you've ever heard just like <laughs> it's like ah. trying to hype up the goblins <laughs> You notice the wolves perk up their ears, but they don't, like, they're not intimidated. Um, the goblins themselves are like, uh, they're like, oh, this pale skin kind of knows how to fight. And this, these dragons are kind of scary. <laughs> um, so this is wolf two. And he misses. So now it is y'all's turn. Okay. Uh, yeah, now my it's. Turn? Yep. How many spaces can I move six times? Yeah. What's the distance on this? I move to the right and I cast one of my cantrips Thaumaturgy and I make the ground tremble because I want the goblins to run away because I don't trust them okay and also in the hopes of getting the wolf to go away do I have to cast a spell or it just works um for that I believe so oh, I can click. Yeah, that's I think it just does an explanation. So the goblins do look startled. Um, and you see them start looking at each other, but because of their power numbers, they're not um, intimidated enough to leave as of yet. Um, you could def One more push could definitely scare them away. Um, but the ground shake, they're pretty set on killing these wolves. 
the wolves themselves are fighting for their lives, basically defending this den, so they're not going to be running away either, to be honest with okay. you. I think that's my turn then. Alright. And that is a miss. Power all moves over here. One, two, three. Cody and then Jamie. I think I so we're still helping the goblins, right? That's up to you. I am still helping the goblins. Out of character. Five, My goal is to help 15, the goblinos 20, here. 30. I'm just going to move there as far as I can move. Alright. Now it'll be Jamie's turn. Uh, I need to look somewhere because I am certain that I had a weird thing I could do with dash, but I can't find it. That's okay, though. So you can do a bonus. If you have a bonus action, you can dash 60 feet, and then you can use a bonus action, but you can't use a regular action. Yeah. Um, Is your punch a bonus action? Yes, but I need to attack to use it as a bonus oh. action. And Cody, if you wanted to, you can move uh, 60 feet with your dash. It makes you move twice as far, but you just can't use an action that turn. Oh. I'm going to move to there. All right. Oh, well, hail. <laughs> no, fuck Do you want to? Fuck it. Okay. Yeah, just, yeah, just. All right. Leave and words that. Marl kills the last wolf. The goblins kind of do a little victory dance, and then they, uh. A uh, to look at Avenel and basically, uh, why would you help us, Pale Skin? We're we're looking for a kid, and I think the wolves may have taken him. Hmm. Um. Well, we haven't seen a kid, but if anybody was to take the kid, it would definitely be that big wolf in the cave, a hundred percent for sure. And you see all the other goblins nod in agreement. And it wouldn't be you guys, would it? No. Uh, well, we... Ah, uh, we haven't messed with any human children recently at all that we can remember. Um, I but... Think that, I'm gonna roll an insight on that there. <laughs> can I speak back and threaten them? You can definitely threaten them. <laughs> and you can roll insight as well. I'm gonna threaten the goblins with rending them in half. If well, they, you can intimidate them, but they won't understand what you're saying. They'll be like, they can, they'll be able to sense like the I hostile can, intent. I can shake my axe at them. Okay? Um, yes, and, but if you, uh, yeah, just roll an, uh, in, what would his, it's charisma, something, roll a charisma check. And Jamie, you can I roll your. I rolled an insight. Yes. Um, so as far is as you. Is there not an intimidate? There is an intimidation. Yeah. There is an intimidation check, yeah. I think it just goes off your charisma, but are you proficient in it? I think you can be, but I'm not sure. Um, but for your insight, Jamie, you basically know that they are they don't seem to have any like information about the human child, okay. but they're definitely hiding something. Okay. Uh, let's see. So I think I just... Uh, I, I just go with my gut and say, well, okay, if you say so, if you say you haven't messed oh, with the child, we should make our way into the cave So because of, and keep uh, working together. <laughs> All right. And uh, so Paul does leave because Paul was kind of spooked by the thaumaturgy. Um, oh. So he was pretty, he was pretty on his last nerve anyway. So you just see Paul dash off into the woods once Cody I starts shaking his axe at him. I think starts running, I say, Paul! Oh! <laughs> yeah, he just oh! takes off running into the woods, never to be seen for a bit. Um, I, can I try and convince him to stay? You can... Uh, no, he's already gone. He's, he's booking it, it okay. full speed. Okay, okay. Paul, Paul is getting the fuck out. 
Um, Wait, who the fuck is Paul? He just one left. He was one of the goblins. You can see their oh. names. There should be little nameplates. Oh. Do you, uh, you guys see them? I do not see little nameplates. Oh. I do not see them. Oh. No, I just thought Paul was a good name for the goblin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is what I can do. There we go. You see him now? There we go. Yeah, yeah, I see the one. All right. Uh, so you guys. I knew Jarl and Carl, but I yeah. didn't know who Paul was. I was like, wait a minute, who's Paul? Jarl, Carl, Paul, Paul, and Marl. Well, Paul doesn't really fit the theme no. here, Cameron. Paul's, Paul's his own man. That's why he left. Paul's a, fucking, Paul's a retard. <laughs> so you guys, uh, you're going into the cave? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, as, I, I make sure with the goblins that, you know, we're still working together. We're going to go in there. And we're going to, you know, we're going to go quiet. We're not going to uh -huh. be crazy. Uh, so the goblin, uh, Marl's basically the spokesperson for the goblins. He basically says, I, "I'm, we're, we're not going to go in the cave. We'll, we, we, we'll cheer you on, but we, we, we don't want to go. You guys, you guys look strong. Can I try and hype them up and get yeah, you, them to come in to the cave? You can. Um. Well, shit, it's not going to go well, but I'm going to try and roll a persuasion check here yeah go see for if it. i can persuade him to come in That's so cool. i don't know what my ob would be so marl and carl are pretty dead set on not going but y'all has been mm -hmm. convinced y'all like well if it makes you feel any better i'll i'll, I'll go too i'll go with you Am I able to intimidate them, or because Cody tried to? You can, late? you can definitely try to if you'd like to. But I can't speak to them, can I? No, they won't understand you. Are we really close to the cave? Uh, you're about feet? yeah, about hundred feet from it. You can see it, but it's a it's a good distance. Uh, would I be able to intimidate them and then cast a spell after? If I'm successful, sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, what spell are you gonna cast? You are very successful. Uh, I wanted to cast. Uh, I wanted to cast create bonfire behind all of them to scare them and force them to run into the cave ahead of us so they all die to whatever's in the cave. So they're definitely not going to run towards the cave. They're going to uh, run. They're booking it straight for the woods. Like, they are uh, gone. <laughs> so Marl and Carl leave. Jarl, being the stalwart goblin that he is, is mm -hmm. going to stay with you guys. But Marl and Carl are just freaking gone. They're booking it. Yeah, I think... Uh, yeah. I think I just say to y'all, don't mind these two. They, they don't know what they're doing. Well, I mean, they they seem really strong, but they they don't seem to like us too much. They just act the part. I don't think we've done anything to you guys, anyways, that I know of. Are you guys new to this area? They are. I was born here oh well anyways um are you guys ready to go into the cave i think it's about time all right so you guys approach the cave are you gonna equip torches or anything like that yeah it's, it's I completely think, um i don't think that i equip a torch okay. i think i because I want to be stealthy in here, and mm -hmm. I think a torch would kind of ruin that idea. Okay. Uh, roll your stealth check for me real quick. Yep. Just to see how stealthy you- oh my god, you're invisible. <laughs> okay. And then, um, let's see. Um, I think before we go in, I just like look to Yarl and say, or I just- hey, I give him a torch. I pull a torch out of my pack and okay. light it for him and say, uh, just- Lead the way. Go with them. All right. And I'll be here, but don't worry about me. I light a torch and I just, in my hand with Cody. I slip into the cave. Oh, okay. Right on. Sorry. Show nameplate and 
So as you guys are approaching the cave, um, Jarl, so you could tell Jarl is like visibly sweating. He's like very nervous. Um, yeah, he's scared as fuck. Yeah. And do, do, do. So he's basically telling you the backstory of the cave, basically telling you, we call this place Fingers Den. It's home to a huge dire wolf. Um, these wolves, they kill many of our goblin folk. And, and as you guys approach, the wolf notices, let's see, give me one second. I want to roll a perception just to see an off chance it might actually see Jamie. Yeah. Oh, it was fucking close. <laughs> nope, it doesn't notice you. Um, but yeah, the wolf notices, it smells the fire and basically lets out like a bellowing howl as you guys enter the cave. Um, it doesn't attack immediately, um, but are you guys going to fight it with Jarl? This is yeah. what we see in the cave, right? We walk in. I'm, yeah. I mean, I, I'm assuming I can't, we can't actually really see into so, the cave that far unless it's lit. Yeah, you know something's in there. You can hear it like, because of the bellowing hell and everything like that, but you can't actually see the wolf yet itself. So I think I make my way to just the wall. Okay. And I just, using the wall, I feel my way around to the back side of the cave to see if I can, like, find anything in here. Find so you, the, the kid we're looking for or So anything. you see a pile of, like, bones of tiny creatures. Um, just tons of bones. Are you, do you want to roll a perception check to see if you can pick up anything from them? Um... Mm, I don't think so. I think I just like, okay. I'm just, like, just edging my way around the room. Okay. And yeah. I don't know. So you definitely just don't see the child. Keeping an eye out for anything, anything yeah. that is alive. Because yeah, I so think they haven't even seen the wolf yet. No, not yet. All you see right now is just piles of bones, like just stacked all the way, like probably like two feet high. They probably come up to about your knee. What are you guys doing okay. while he's stealthing around the room? I stay behind Hydroclusis because I don't t trust the goblin. Waiting for Hydroclusis to go forward and you're all to go in the very front with the torch for the goblin to lead the way. So in case there's a trap. Yarl basically looks at Hydroclusis and is like, You're strong. Don't you wanna you wanna lead the way? Maybe? <laughs> so you're rolling intimidation to see if you can make him go first. Intimidation, I shake my axe at him and point straight ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he he's just slowly inching up, like very slowly, like scared out of his mind, sweating. And then, and I'm still gonna continue inching my way along as you do this. All right. Move as this just is happening. A little bit. <laughs> so the uh, wolf noticing your roll. Because he's just just moved in range of it, it goes mm -hmm. up and just immediately attacks Jarl. <laughs> so Jarl's hey. dead. Jarl just Jarl just got like a skull like crushed in the mouth of the wolf as he lets out a little. Arc. So, every, uh, Cody and Andrew roll initiative. It still doesn't notice Jamie yet. Okay, the second the wolf pounces. I make my way to the pile of bones and start just like shuffling through them to see if I can see anything like in hiding in the bones or anything. Oh, I forgot to do it the right way. Yeah. Yeah, if and you just roll, uh, too, in roll case it I the right way, I can fix take it. Into combat. Okay. Uh, it should be a seven. Seven, gotcha. All right. So the wolf, what did you say you were doing, Jamie? Sorry, I kind of missed it. I just start start shuffling through the bones. To see okay. It. No, no, no. Towards like in in the bone pile to see if I can like if anything's like hiding in the bone pile or something, you know. Okay. So, you're it to you just looks like a bunch of tiny goblins bones. Would you like to roll a perception check? Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I think so. Cause they, yeah, I guess that accomplishes my. Look yeah. through the bone piles. Yeah. 
Alright. Alright, yeah, it just looks like bones. <laughs> it looks like bones. That's bones. <laughs> Alright. So it's gonna go up and it's gonna attack Hydroclusis. Um let's see. I cannot see the turn tracker. Oh, I don't know how to Jesus make it. What's your AC? Oh, 14? Yeah. 14. So you're knocked out, oh. Cody. No, it's no no. He did. How change that? He's not dead. <laughs> He's knocked out. So you can, uh, whenever it gets to your turn, Cody, you roll a d20. If you roll a 10 or above, you succeed. If you roll a 10 or below, you, lo you do a death fail. Um, if you get three death fails, you're dead. If you get three successes, then um, you're basically stable. You're still unconscious, but you're not dead. Uh, and let's Holy see. shit. Yeah. Um, what was I? Something, something. Y'all better not leave my unconscious body here, <laughs> assholes. That's all I'm gonna say. And I think that's the wolf's turn. Okay. Oh, so this, uh, <laughs> my turn? Yeah. Oh, how do I make the roll tracker visible? I think it's actually Jamie's turn, sorry. Let me yeah, I think it. it's me, yeah. Yeah, let me make that this. Works. How do I make it visible? There it is. There okay, it is. Cool. cool. Um, well, fuck, I'm just going to dash. Okay. Up behind the wolf. Yep. And you can uh, attack with initiative. Uh, what? You, oh, I made an advantage. Because it doesn't oh. know you're there. It's not paying attention to you. Okay. All so right, 14 so you... hit for 11? Yep, that hits. All right. And then I'm gonna fucking fist it right in the asshole. <laughs> it gives a little yelp. Uh, okay, so that will be... 7... All right, now it's Andrew's turn. Okie dokie. I make a dash backwards and to the left. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. To here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to cast a spell. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to cast Create Bonfire. Okay. So that definitely hits, and is that a, no, that's not d20. So you hit it for nine damage. Okay. And the wolf is like panting because it's hurt. And then. Oh, don't you get to do a dexterity saving throw? It's, yeah, it's, oh, it yeah. should be Cody's, Cody's saving right now. Oh yeah, Cody, make your saving throw. See if it takes less. What's the saving throw against you? Death save. How did you do that? How did you roll a death save? <laughs> Literally. Oh, okay. So, I see. Okay, yeah. so you failed one. Right if HP. you want to mark that down. What do you need yeah. to get it, above a ten is a success, and below a ten is a fail. Yeah, and if you guys heal him by like even one like hit point, he just automatically comes up. Okay. Um. Well, let's see. Sounds like the monk needs to do the job. <laughs> I don't think monks heal. <laughs> I don't oh, even think he and you were saying the wolf needed to do a save against the bonfire thing. Yeah, so it takes... Oh, what's your DC um, on saving throws? Me? Yeah, like what's the uh, difficulty check to not get hit? Should be like 8 plus uh, your stat modifier, plus your proficiency. Uh, I don't know. Let me look at your thing real quick. Can't trip, create bonfire, uses charisma? Is that what you mean? Yeah, so you got saving eight. Saving throw dexterity. Oh, I didn't fill anything in for the saving throw part. It's all good. I just wrote it in. So I think it it's just eight. said, when you cast the spell, the creature must succeed on a dexterity saving throw. So your saving throw, because you're a warlock, Andrew, will be eight, plus your charisma, which is five. Your, like, your modifier. So that's 13, and then... You have proficiency in your spells, so that's that's another two. So it's fifteen to do a deck saving throw. Um, let me oh. check something real quick. No, about the fourteen. Yeah, let me wow, see. Wow, that was close. 
Because I think wolves get like advantage on certain saving throws. Let me make sure. Real quick. Sorry for slowing it down. Wisdom perception I checks. I the dexterity. You, you just hit. click on the button that says dexterity and then you either win or you don't win. So the wolf rolls a dexterity saving throw, which is what it did, against your difficulty check. Yep. Uh, so usually uh, if you... Based on your tech, create the, yeah, the goal he needs to get. Yes. Yep. Got it, got it. All right. Now it's going to attempt to bite it, Jamie. And I have to click it. Oh, that's a hit, and I oh. am fucking down for the oh. count. <laughs> so if, now, it, if it's that 21 there. Yeah, it's just 12. Oh, uh, yep, yeah, you're down. And now it'd be Andrew's turn. Oh, well, roll your segment though, uh, Aunt Jamie. Yep. Oh yeah, you passed that. That's a success. Okay. And if you get like a one or a 20, if it's a 20, you get two successes. If you get a one, you get two failures. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So now it's your turn, Andrew. Uh, I aim at the monster. Trying to save everybody. And use Eldrick Blast. Uh, that is a miss. Fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Here's where we die, boys. <laughs> yep. The day we die to a fucking wolf in a cave. There's no way he's gonna, he's so fucked up, he's gonna miss. He missed, yeah. <laughs> he just right. he fucking smacks us. <laughs> it misses on this. <laughs> the wizard. And he's got like the lowest fucking AC to hit, <laughs> too. He's got a 10. All right, your turn, Andrew. Oh, wait, no. Did you roll your saving throw, Cody? Yeah, that's 14. It's a success. Oh, success. And then Jamie, roll yours again yep all right that's a save all right now it's your turn andrew uh, oh if i move it's gonna attack me with something you can disengage but it's gonna take your action if you do it oh, screw that electric blast again hopefully it right. works uh that is a okay. miss a 13. Yeah, it's got a 14 AC. Yeah. Uh, so it does 7 damage to you, Andrew. And then, right as it hits me, I cast... Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. I need a death save. Oh, wait, his is a... Re well, it don't matter. Yeah, yeah. So, rebuke. Okay. Uh, you point your finger in the creature that is damaged. Oh, fuck, I missed. I don't. Do you so actually that roll on that? I don't think you roll. It? Yeah, I don't think you roll on that. Uh, I think it just rolls a deck save. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I think that's like something that automatically happens. Give me one sec while I roll the save. So it needs a 15. Yep. And it gets hit. So roll For your 13. 13. So he, what is it? Is it dead? It is! <laughs> Wait, what do I have to do? I have to roll something, no? No. Or I just take the damage? Oh, yeah. You meant to? Yeah, you take the damage and it goes down. Like, basically, it burns to death as it's, like, biting you. The flames, like, burst through its body and it just, like, dies. Dude, Disappeared. Alright. Um, we'll say you start with healing potions. Um, as part of your traveling kit, you all have like one healing potion, so you can revive one okay. first and then revive the other one. Um, it's, I believe, a 2d8 heal. So just roll a 2d8, Andrew, and that's how much whoever you heal gets it. Alright, so Cody gets nine hit points. Heal me! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Cody's character knows how to revive people. He's got a healing potion as well. You all start with one healing potion. We'll does say. Cody have to roll to make no, sure he doesn't drop it on the ground on accident? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. And then, yeah, no. Andrew is at free HP, so I'm going to use my healing potion on him. Okay. Uh, thank you. So. Alright. All right. Oh. Now what are you guys know. going to do after you destroy the dire wolf? Um, does anything happen? 
does he does something weird happen when he dies or is it just like yeah it's just a normal wolf and it died it's just a really big wolf um you just see that he's just like burnt burn up but there's nothing um special that happens when he dies at all did we get experience for killing it yes but you won't get into the end of the session oh yeah all right um i think i just start looking around the room i i pick up the torch on the ground from where Uh fucking jarl died right there or some shit and then just start walking around the cave and looking for shit hoping hoping the kid is in here somewhere or there's while he's looking around what what are you two doing i just sit down on the floor (laughs) pissed off Uh, (laughs) I'm <laughs> trying to catch my breath after being alright Jamie roll me a perception check yeah I think I'm just like fucking exhausted but just like limping around like just needing to find this kid um alright so you see absolutely no signs of a child at all. All you see is bones. You don't even see any like any remnants of a child at all. The most blood. Do I see you... anything like along the cave walls that would? All you see is bones, bones, and you notice that those like most of the bones don't even look like human bones. They actually look. Um, you see Jarl's like cracked open skull, and it looks a lot like just goblin bones everywhere. You don't see any traces of any human bones. And there's nothing along the walls, it's just like a little den cave. Yep, just a cave where the wolf lives. That's all it is. So there's no no signs of the child at all in this cave. So where are you guys going to go from here? I speak to Avenue. Uh, yeah, I walk I back to the group. I don't trust those goblins. They were hiding something from us. I think we should cut the wolf's head off and bring it to their cave and ask that they tell the truth. If you can get them to tell the truth, that might lead to more clues. They were hiding something. If they see that we killed the wolf, they'll know that we can kill all them easily. I think I just nod and look at Hydroclusis, like, in expecting him to cut the head of the wolf off. I mean, yeah. I'll cut to them, but we'll set it off. <laughs> do I have to roll anything to cut its head off, or I just do it? If you want to, you can. You can roll a straight check to see if you want to add some flavor to it. Uh, I just got... Uh, roll a straight check. It'll be fun. <laughs> just click the string. Yeah, so you pretty much, with one thorough swack and just immediately chop off the head and like blood just kind of splurts out the back of it um god he couldn't have just done that during the fight <laughs> <laughs> all right so how are you guys going to uh continue your quest for the goblins i think i i'm all in on on the on the plan of bringing the wolf's head to to where the goblins are and I think just uh I head out and try and track where Carl and Marl went mm-hmm. so you start and, following the tracks of Carl and yep. Marl yep uh-huh. just follow the tracks of Carl and Marl back to the goblin den alright so after traveling for about 10-20 um, minutes not far you actually do find out see a fort like a wooden fort that the goblets are inhabiting. Um, as you enter, there are only two goblins. You don't see Carl and Marl. They didn't. They are not at the goblin hideout, or at least the goblins that are there do not look like Carl and Marl. And you see a bigger goblin that obviously looks like the boss. He's wearing um, better armor, looks a little bit more fancy, and the goblins are like extremely shocked and like pick up their weapons as you enter. They And you hear the fancier looking goblin scream. What are all these pale skins doing here? We just killed two of our goblins because they didn't kill them in the first place. What do you guys do? 
Because we didn't kill the goblins? No, because the goblins didn't kill you. They came back mm. and told them about you guys. <laughs> they don't know that you guys are those pale skins, but they basically, yep. uh, as far as you could tell, Carl Marl uh, reported back. I look at Avenue and say, Told you, little bastards lied. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just point to the wolf head. You see shock on the more, on the especially on the weaker looking goblins. Mm-hmm. Um, but the bigger goblin says, "Well, at least they killed the wolf for us, but now we need to get rid of them." And they uh, take up fighting stances. Um, roll initiative. Well, can I try and persuade them? You can. To not you can. Fight? No, you can try. I but, point to the wolf's head, and I say, We're not looking for trouble, we're here for a deal. The wolf's head for the child. <laughs> roll, roll persuasion. So, they hear you about the child, but they say, We don't have any sp- pale skinned babies. They told us you were asking about them, but we're we don't even know what you're talking about. We haven't seen any pale skinned baby. They don't come into the woods. We don't we don't go out and grab pale skinned babies. We have nothing to do with that. But you must die because you know where our hideout is now. <laughs> this motherfucker <laughs> I just I just nod and say, as you wish. That's a big ass I got a big ass wolf skull with me, right? Yeah. She just like happened. it's really big, right? Yeah, it's huge. I'm tempted to throw it at this motherfucker. Well, really big, right? Let's see. How's I'm tempted this? to throw it at this motherfucker. All right. And How would we play that out? Uh, when you get to your turn, we can do it. Um, so we'll say it does like 2d8 damage, and you'll do like a strength check to see if you can do it. Um, but did everybody else roll initiative? initiative do anything? He'll definitely go first. Yeah. yeah, so he'll go first before everybody else. There's nothing like special, special about it. Okay. Um, because they they obviously know you're there, so it's not going to be like a surprise attack or anything. Um, yeah, what? Did you roll initiative, Andrew? Oh yeah, you got 19. Yeah. Alright, let's get this in order. I wish you would do it for me. Descending. Alright, so first will be Cody. So I'm gonna step forward. Uh-huh. And, and roll it with advantage. Of... Yeah, do a huh? strength check. Do a strength check with advantage. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now roll. Roll a. Let's say it's two d eight. So, I t- toss that at him. I guess those numbers are going to get it to work. Okay, who are you throwing it at? I'm throwing it at the big fucker. All right. Not the big fucker, but the special one. Right. So, what would I need to roll? I figure it's big enough to knock him off his feet when it comes. Yeah, he definitely goes, like, it knocks him down. Um, which just basically means in D&D um, that if he gets up, he can only move half the distance. He can still get up and attack, but he can only go half as far as he normally would. Yeah. Um, but let me see. That's nine damage. It won't crit because it's a wolf's head. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how to do that, to be honest with you. It'd be really cool, but I don't know how to do it. Uh, but yeah, he, he is knocked on the ground and like just screaming, What the fuck? <laughs> well, I, I feel like how he would roll crit is he would roll another 2d8. Oh, yeah, that's what you do. It, and yeah. add it to it? Yeah, roll it again. Because he did 12. All and right. Then 7. Yeah. So, yeah. That's what he's... It, does. it just doubles your damage, right? Yeah, that sounds right. So, he's just like on the ground underneath the wolf head. The like, teeth like latch into his like shoulder. And he's just screaming in pain. Um, the other goblins are looking at him like pretty shocked. Um, Dill, like, instead of like coming at you guys, just kind of like inches away from the boss. And like just starts heading to the door that you guys just came through. 
Um, Alright, it's your turn, Andrew. <laughs> I move slightly over here, and mm -hmm. I target the main boss who just got the head tucked at him. Uh-huh. Uh, where's the button? And, and you she... rolled us with advantage because he's on the ground. What did you say? It's with advantage as well because he's on the ground. Okay. I'll cast Eldrick Blast with advantage at him to finish him off. And that is a hit. So, like, how, you want to do your death blow? Uh, hit him in the stomach and it explodes and there's a big confetti of blood everywhere and the goblins are terrified. <laughs> And you just basically, all his flesh kind of got ripped off him, and you just see a skeleton where the big boss was. <laughs> the only skin left is that of the wolf head. And now it's uh, Jamie's turn. I think I just make my way to in front of the door we came in, <laughs> and I, I just shout to the goblins, it's not in your best interest to run right now. <laughs> and then, uh, the goblin on the left basically shouts, Well, what else are we supposed to do? We don't have the bell skin, baby. You killed our killed our leader. We don't know what to do. We gotta get out of here. What how about we how about we not fight? How about how about we call truce? Truce? I I just shout to to a hydroclusis and uh Ah oh, fuck. More to most and say they they want a truce so we'll give them a truce if they tell us the secrets that they're hiding we'll give you a truce if you tell us what you're hiding I say to him uh, well uh, I, um, I'm not hiding anything that I think pertains to you uh, well I suppose you're choosing death then that's a fair uh, option wait 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 um we, we had a, a magical relic that was given to us, but it was sent away by our boss today. Uh, I don't know what it does. I don't know what it was, but it's 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 gone. We don't have it no more. It was taken away. I, I don't know, but uh, can I live? Where did you send it? Uh, a man, a, a tall, tall, pale skin came and got it. Um, I don't, I, I, that's basically all I know. We don't usually have pale skins around here, but he seemed to know the boss somehow. Uh, basically it was just a job. We were just given a job to give him this relic. That's it. That's all I know. And I, I, I just, I look at Hedricus and Mordmos and just say, well, kill him boys. <laughs> Pickle has a little scream. Is that the end of your turn, Jamie? <laughs> yeah, that's how I'm at my turn for sure. Okay. So Pickle and like just knowing that he's not <laughs> gonna be able to break out. Right away. Is that Pickle? <laughs> that's Dill. Dill just Dill just <laughs> Dill's just hoping Pickle, you guys. Pickle was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Dill's just hoping you guys forgot about him while Pickle was trying to like live. <laughs> Dill Pickle, what's the boss's name? I don't. He's dead. His boss is dead. His name's dead. Uh, so Pickle to like swings. He's like flailing um, in a panic, and he just like completely misses you, Cody. And now I think yeah. it's back to your turn. Yeah. So let's see how. <laughs> <laughs> you want to describe the death scene of Pickle? I just... <laughs> oh, as he's flailing at me, I have my axe above and just cleave his head from his shoulders. You just hear like a, a little screech as he just completely splits in half and falls to the ground <laughs> in two. You can see Dill in the corner where he ran to just like sweating. Um, knowing that escape is no longer an option, he just readies his bow and tries to take a lucky shot at, uh, at Andrew, or more to most, and he hits for 11 damage. 
Christ, am I dead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're unconscious. Eleven? Yeah. He crit. What a so, god! <laughs> so, you're unconscious. Uh, so it's your turn roll. It's uh, death saving throw. Uh, how do you do it? Uh, you got to... your hit points on your character sheet. Yeah, under your hit points, it'll say, it says death saves. Temporary hit point? No, oh, death saves. Yeah. Yep. And then, Nat, you say you succeeded, so you can put one in the successes, successes. bubble. Ah. Neato. Okay. Alright, now it'll be uh, Jamie's turn. Alright. I fucking dash to Dill. He just like screeches as you approach him. I lied, I lied, I lied, I lied, I lied. Uh -huh. I lied so hard. Uh -huh. Can I try and do like a, a medical Medicine check, check? mid-fight? Yep. Uh, you could, uh, but if it's mid-fight, you're gonna have to roll it with disadvantage. Mid-fight. Uh, it'd be a wisdom check. So, uh, as I'm like, oh, can I speak? Or I'm too you're unconscious. unconscious. You're yeah, unconscious. You're... Disadvantage? Yeah, disadvantage because you're in combat. What happens if I fuck this up? Uh, yeah, yeah. if you get like a, a like a crit fail, then cut, then Andrew's gonna get a death fail. That's funny. Okay. Just one, <laughs> but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. All right, you definitely succeed. So Andrew comes up with one hit point. And then right. it is Cody's turn. Kill that son of a bitch. <laughs> 15, 20, 25. <laughs> you're in kill radius of dill. <laughs> uh, I said you're in kill radius of dill. I can't move another five feet. <laughs> this is fucking bullshit. Uh, <laughs> I, I just roar at him because I can't get any fucking closer and I'm dead. Dill has like. Where are you going? Dill has renewed confidence after downing someone with one shot of his arrow. <laughs> and he just runs. He takes another shot at Andrew. This motherfucker. <laughs> so you still have uh, Yeah, so you just start over with your Dave's death saves. Okay, so that's this one fail. This motherfucker is so no, toxic. No, this is this fucking goblin is the league community rolled into a fucking goblin. Why is this guy not the fucking boss? He's just like grinning from ear to ear. He's so proud of himself right now for what he's been doing. So now it'd be Cody's. Oh, it'd be Jamie's turn. What are you going to do, Jamie? I'm dashing to right there. Okay. What are you going to do, Cody? 5, 10, 15, 20. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a definite wow. hit. You just <laughs> wow, you want to do your killing blow. <laughs> 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 you just see Dill drop his bow. I, I just, I just fucking, I grab him up, I grab him up by the top of the head, look him directly in the eyes, and say, "What are you smiling about, little goblin?" He's just kicking his feet, trying to get down, like pulling with all his might. <laughs> as I, as I crush his skull and cut him clean in half with my axe. <laughs> Thus ends the saga of Dill and his exploits. What a fucking legend Dill was. Holy shit. Dill, Dill tried, but Dill failed. Alright, so Andrew, roll me another saving throw. Pickle be gone. Oh, Pickle got fucked up. Uh, Dill's a type of pickle. I know, but the other one was named Pickle. I fucking killed Pickle, too. Oh, oh my I'm god. Dead. Uh, we'll, we'll say since this is the first campaign, we're just gonna say we're we're not gonna count the death on the first campaign. We'll just say, sure. yeah, because I don't, uh, just because it's the first one. If we go further in, then maybe you'd have to reroll. But we'll just, since we're still learning and everything, we'll just say that you get up hurt with one HP. Good 
But in further sessions, if it happens, we'll say you die. But just to be, because I kind of want to um, continue with our character. So question. Yes. Realistically, would he need to make that death save because the combat is over? Yes, like, because. Or couldn't we say um, we're like going to grab him and take him to. The reason why he would you know? is just because you're not close enough to actually do it before you'd have to take the death save. Just because you wouldn't be close enough to get over to him, and he's even though close enough to a town. Yeah, what yeah, uh, and and you only have so much movement. Like you wouldn't be able to, even if you were going to do a medicine check, you wouldn't be able to get in range with it in him of like one turn. Gotcha. Like you wouldn't be able to get to him before you had to do a death saving throw. Is but, there ways you can bring yourself back up after you're unconscious, or no? There might be some kind of like later in the game ability, but for the most part, you're pretty much just unconscious. Somebody else has to help you. Like they can heal you or something, okay. but I don't think there's like something where you can bring yourself up because you're just completely blacked for the fight. Um, Got it. All right. So what are you guys going to do now? I'm gonna search around this damn fucking goblin fort. Okay. And see if they got any shit stashed away, some gold or. I. No. What's everyone else doing? I, I, I was gonna say I point. I pointed at Andrew and said we should probably take Hurt Warlock back to town. I'm like <laughs> groveling on the floor in pain. <laughs> All right, but Jamie Romby. I, I, uh, I tell everybody if you want to go look for stuff, be quick. Okay. Yeah, I'm just like in sprinting around. Like, I mean, they're fucking goblins. They're dumb. Their gold would just be like out somewhere, and if I can't find it, then they don't have any. Okay, so I'm so... gonna just sprint around the room, hit a perception, and so you, you do find, um, we'll say fifty gold off the like the corpse of the boss. That was uh, basically like you see like where his clothes got like tore or sent off by the Eldritch Blast, and you see like a coin purse <laughs> that had like um, fifty gold pieces in it. Um, okay, you also see a note. But it's too torn and faded to read. Um, basically, all it says is that I'll be. Co it says coming for the item. That's all it says. Is that it? Just basically notates that someone's coming for that relic, as the goblin had told you. Mm -hmm. All right, are you guys heading back to town? We need to. Yeah, and I think as we're like. Carting back, fucking Andrew. I tell them about the the relic. Come on, Andrew. I'm on my back. All right. <laughs> so, as you guys are approaching town, um, you see Sarah, and she's just ec uh, ecstatic that yet. you. Not yet. So you'll still be. Oh, it. I. I uh, yeah, you just have to edit it when you go to a new page. I don't have a way to do it. But, um, so basically you enter the town and you see Sarah. And she's ecstatic to see you. She's like, thank goodness you're okay. Um, and you see a little child next to her. Oh and she God. says, oh, Billy, I, I found him. He was just, he was hiding. Um, I'm, I'm glad you guys made it back okay. I'll still give you the reward. Um. And the barkeep says that you'll be able to stay the night in the rest er, the rest house for free. Uh, he's friends with the owner. But um, thank you so much for going out there and looking for him. I mean, uh, I did tell him not to go to the woods, so I guess he listened to me at least. But I really wish he'd stop playing pranks like that. Go apologize to them, Billy. And you see the little kid just with a finger up his nose. And he walks up to you guys. And he's like... Well, it's not my fault they were dumb enough to go into the woods. Uh, even I know not to go into the woods. Maybe wants to kill this booger picker, but he's not going to do it. <laughs> my character is infuriated. Mortimer is infuriated, but too injured to do anything about it. I lift up a finger to start casting a spell and realize that I'm too weak to do anything. It kind of just flickers out <laughs> as you're trying to... <laughs> <laughs> he gets shocked a little bit, but then he like gets like a smug look. Um, but basically, as she does hand you like twenty five gold pieces, and you guys will be able to stay at the rest area for the night for free. Um, 
but that will that will be the end of our session. <laughs>